At the moment, you probably can't tell what this really is, but this is the scariest and the most risky thing that we've ever attempted. I bought a wrecked Porsche Cayman GTS off the side of the road, not knowing how bad it actually was. And this is the scariest project that we've ever done because we tore it all apart, and for the last episode, we even cut the entire front end off of this Cayman GTS. Ah! <laughs> Holy shit. Do we know what we're doing? Hell no, but we're gonna figure it out. Today marks one of the biggest steps towards fixing this car, but not without its hiccups. So with our most recent discovery, we gave our local body shop SOS Customs a call to see how we should go about starting to fix the frame rail. You know, drill out the spot welds, hammer everything flat against a piece of metal, then put it all back together again. Okay. Take a look at the frame rail now, which we know obviously moved a little bit. You can really get a sense of how bent our frame rails actually are. And granted, we have new pieces, but it goes a little deeper than what we really expected. This side's a little bit better than this side because this was the side that the impact was on. And now with everything out of the way, we have the panels removed, the front tub is off. You can actually get access inside of the frame rails. We can see bends that we weren't able to see prior. There's a new bend that we we found right in the center of the frame rail right there which we can really get good access to or good look at now with that front panel off how much this goes up not only is it up but it's also moved to the side so to our surprise there's actually a lot more frame damage than we initially thought we can't be that surprised i bought this car unknowing how much damage there actually was there's nothing left to do now but fix it and we may not know how to fix it but we're gonna figure it out last episode you guys saw us purchase a new tub and today we show you exactly why to start us out today we have a brand new 981 came in front tub which we essentially have to do exactly what we did in the last episode pretty much take off all of the seam sealer all of the rivets and get this front tub detached from its current frame rail which we will no longer be using because we're gonna be using our own and then mocking it up to see how bad the frame damage really is initially when we got the car we thought that we wouldn't be using any of the frame rail that was bent but to our surprise we pulled off the wrecked frame rail there's actually a lot more damage to the frame than we thought and the only way to correct this and figure out how to correct it is to have this tub taken off so that we can take it on take it off take it on take it off of our current frame rails to see how much this has to be moved and if we can even do it because you know what tim have you ever moved a frame rail no M moved a subframe no no so we're gonna figure it out well last episode we thought we had a lot of cutting and grinding today is on a whole other level the difference here is we have to be strategic we can't just cut the tub off now we have to grind all of the adhesive off and all of the rivets must be drilled out and remember we have to reuse this tub, which means we have one shot at not messing this up. So firstly, I'm using the grinder wheel and grinding down all of the seam sealer to reveal the panels and reveal all of the rivets. Uh, hard man at work here. Things they don't tell you. Good night, that's a lot. We're taking all this off and we gotta put it all back on. So, yeah. Won't be as much. It looks like you've been erasing for like three years with an eraser. <laughs> this is all over you. I mean, look how much it's like for you guys, it's gotta be like, I don't know if it's as crazy for us because all of this was covered, but now you can see it's all just piece by piece sealed and riveted together. And the whole goal of this is to be able to completely take this thing apart. It's so cool. It's legitimately like an adult Lego, expert level. <laughs> Yeah, there's all this here. This right here for reference, guys, this right here is the frame rail that is on our car that's bent. So this is gonna give us a good idea once we get this tub off, like I said, to kind of test fit this under our car to see how bent this actually is. Test fit the tub, it'll be able to tell us, you know, which way it's bent and how much we need to go. It's pretty interesting. It'll be uh, good to have this as well, so we can have this as a reference to our OEM one that's bent. Pretty cool. As the day goes on, the adhesive comes off, quickly revealing just how much work we actually have. <sighs> I 
After what feels like weeks of grinding seams to the raw for this front tub. Oh, it's all over this lens. Wow. We have finally finished. Let's check it out. Now we can see all the exposed rivet holes and things that we have to drill out to be able to get this front tub off of this frame. Now, we're not done just yet because, like I said, we have to drill all of these rivets off of this frame and off of these frame rails down here so we can pretty much extract this tub portion to put on to our car. You ready for this, Tim? Oh yeah. Just... This, is, this is one of the hardest parts, I think, because we have to keep this tub intact as much as possible. Well, we have to keep it intact, period. There's so much <laughs> as possible. Yes, that's awesome. There's great. like sections like here, we can bend and then bend back, but like the actual structure of the tub itself needs to stay the same. And that's the scary part, because any screw up on this is a big, big, big screw up. We're gonna go for it and uh, see if we can get this all taken apart today so that we can start fitting up and cutting those current frame rails and bending those back straight because they're not straight at all. So let's get started. Today is the make or break. The tub is coming off. The main mission, let's not f it up. This is definitely gonna be the longest process. There's countless rivets to drill out and panels to hammer through. So let's get started. Well, after going through almost all of our drill bits, we resorted to just grinding off the rest of the rivet heads. Well, with a little bit of grinding and a little bit of drilling, I think that our first tub piece is ready to pull off. Now, this is gonna be one of the cooler parts as well throughout the entire day, really, is watching this tub completely come apart. Kind of like how it was getting the front end off of the Porsche. This whole thing is modular and it's gonna be piece by piece coming apart. And seeing a bare tub is gonna be really cool after seeing it like this. Tim, would you like to do some hammering I'll and some knock pulling? Knock her off. Knock her off. Full disclosure, we're getting a new one of these, that's why we grinded. Yes. <laughs> if we weren't, if we were gonna reuse this, it would be difficult because you'll see once we start bending it. Ah! Our first biggest piece of the tub is off. Now, now that that's off, it leads us to probably the scariest portion of getting this tub off because from here, I mean, I guess this goes for the same for all of it. We cannot mess up at all because we have to use this. When you guys saw us pull off the actual front tub from our original Porsche, we cut it from the frame rails here. But this time we don't have the luxury of cutting it because that would destroy our tub. So we have to properly remove it from the frame rail just as we did this top portion. And we cannot mess it up. We cannot screw it up. We cannot, well, I guess we can bend it because we always bend the aluminum back a little bit, but we have to do it very precisely to make sure that it goes on our car the easiest way possible. So again, we're cutting and drilling. As luxurious as I want to make this seem, this is really the bulk of our day. Now at this point, we have sort of an idea of what we're doing. It's pretty damn cool watching this thing come together. Or I guess in our case, coming apart. Yeah, yeah, I know I said no cutting, but we're making great progress and the tub needed to be removed from the strut tower and it was the easiest part. We're now down to the panels that are holding the tub onto the existing frame rails and it's just a matter of cutting and hammering them off. Ooh. 
It looks horrible, right? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm trying to keep you up to date as clearly as possible here, because this is even getting confusing in my brain with how this goes together. So let's give you guys a little demonstration of what we have. I feel like this is a good time to do so since it's piecing together. You guys saw the top portion of the tub. Oh. Now our side pieces that connect the tub to the frame rail are piecing off. This is kind of like an exoskeleton, okay? This is, for lack of better terms, the glue that holds the tub to the frame rail. Now our stock frame rails, are right here. First, lesser important part is the top. The most important part is the bottom because that gets reused. None of this gets reused because we have these frame rails. Now these are a, again, restricted part by Porsche, meaning you could only get these if we were a Porsche repair shop. Luckily, Tim found these. I can't remember if I explained this in the video or it was a lot, I don't remember. Possibly. <laughs> but Tim found these, these are only replacement parts. So since this car has been wrecked, you no longer just have nice OEM structural frame rails. You have replacement frame rails that bolt back into the structural integrity of the car. So that's why we don't care about the top because the top gets replaced. What doesn't get replaced is the bottom. You guys can see right here, we're gonna connect the tub to this portion right here. So it has to be done with precise incisions. With with precise, what about, what's the word? With preciseness. Is that a word? <laughs> I don't know. That's what we're gonna work on right now. We are, we are close, but it's stressful. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling out the bottom portion of the tub, being as careful as I can. Then, once both sides are done, we should be able to essentially peel off. So once we get those drilled out, we should be able to get it to pull off just like that. so. And cross our fingers, that happens, and then we have our new tub for the Cayman. Again, we have no idea what we're doing, so let's just hop into it and see what happens. One side down, one more to go. And, oh God. <laughs> Junk pile, just like that, Tim. We have this a, we, we have a bare front tub for our Cayman GTS. This is insane, dude. This is all we needed. Right here, oh. Out of all that metal, this is the only <laughs> thing that we needed. So it'll essentially like. Just slide her in. So, this, it goes on that way. This is our next step in today's video, getting this bare front tub onto the actual chassis of the car. And once we do that, we can start building this thing. But this is a huge step in the build. Guys, we literally just cut the whole front end off of this car, got a new front end, disassembled it, and now it's gonna slap onto this thing. How crazy is that? That's, this is definitely our biggest undertaking ever. And while it hasn't been the smoothest thing ever, taught us a lot so far. So essentially, we still have more to chop off of our stock frame rails here. But essentially this guy is going to slide into there, bolt in here, and this is our new front end. And then boom, bing, bang, bomb, it's a new car. All right, we still got a lot of work to do. So massive, massive success number one for today's video, but let's slap it on the car properly. Probably. Mission one complete. We have a bare front tub, but what good is the tub if it can't go on the car? Our frame is bent and without straightening the frame, none of this works. Now it's time to get this car straight, if we can. Again, we started by measuring our current frame rails on the car and cutting off the unnecessary metal. This will allow for our new bolt-on frame rails to slide in. 
And don't worry, this will make much more sense later on. While we were successful at cutting the metal off, it quickly became clear that we were going to need some help bending it. Good to see ya. What's up, man? Thanks for coming out. Good to see you. Thanks for coming, guys. Appreciate it. We got the professionals here. Our boys from SOS Customs made the house call for us. House call. We are by no means inclined on how to actually bend frame rails. And this is a special case, especially because these frame rails are aluminum. So yes. it needs the tender love and care of a true professional. So our guys over at SOS Customs were kind enough to come out and make a house call for us and help us get these frame rails bent straight. Now so that's going to be a hard thing because <laughs> aluminum does not like to bend. What do you think? What do you, what's your initial impression here? Really? Could be worse. Yeah, uh, that's what we said. Before we got like the, fur, like the, uh, like I'm going to call it the exoskeleton, like the tub off, it really didn't even look this bad. But once everything came all off, you could really tell the bend and how much it got moved kind of yeah. like that, you know? So we actually tried our hand at getting this bent by just using hammers and heat mm -hmm. and uh they didn't want to move at all so that's when we called in the big guns yeah when it comes down to aluminum it's uh really hard to manipulate it so our main approach would probably be a port of power try to press them out the opposite way and straighten them out as best as possible um heat might be an element that we can use too yes but uh we don't want to burn down the house so we'll, <laughs> we'll stick to, to compression pressure. sick well figured it'd be cool to show you guys how exactly we're going to get these frame rails straight and then hopefully today we can test fit and put on the new frame rails and the new front tub. What do you think about our DIY work here? I mean, it looks really good. Tim actually spent all day yesterday since we couldn't get those frame rails straight and straightened out all the stuff that we bent and cut out so that this tub is really, really nice and it's almost just set and ready to go. I mean, once those are straight, we can put on those frame rails and this thing will essentially just Right yeah, yeah. And with the frame rails, this is definitely not something that you want to skimp out on. So if we could have some professional hands here, help us get this thing exactly right, that is definitely the best option for us and most mostly the right way to do this for sure. What happens with aluminum, it could only bend so much before it breaks, right. right? So like, let's say if I put this on my frame machine and we pulled it, it would, instead of like pulling, it would just literally break in half. Right. Because the aluminum could only be manipulated, manipulated yeah. as much as, as you really can before it reaches a breaking point. That's why even when we get aluminum hoods there with a bunch of dents, we're like, hey, replace this. Just, just do it. Just, yeah. Uh, that's why you gotta do it like very gently. Yeah. You know, it's like you gotta talk to it nice, you know, <laughs> take it out for a couple drinks, you know, meet meet the parents and all yeah, that. Yeah, you you yeah. can't talk, just talk like. Sweet a little bit. Yeah, you gotta talk sweet to it, you know? Okay. We gotta make it work, uh, and we gotta make it work because we have to. We have no other choices, Dustin. We gotta get your, exactly. gotta get you rolling the Porsche sooner than later. So let's get this thing done. I love it. So right now we're gonna start trying to port a power these up and get the tub to fit roughly where it's supposed to. Uh, right now it's just kind of mocking up. So like I want to kind of get this. Yeah. You know, for all the people that are like, hey, you know, I have a, a master's in body work, and uh, you know, I poor certified spec and you know my uncle's best friend runs a body shop and all those type of guys that are in the comments section. you down in the comments yeah talking to you guys <laughs> you know we're this is a house call obviously yeah. we don't we're not on the frame machine we're we, you know we don't we're not replacing everything because more than likely if we're if we're being serious this, this probably would have been a total loss yeah well that's initially what it was but you know what tim and i are bringing her back to life so yeah. she's not a total loss. yeah no no it would have been Yes. But then that's until she got a hold of you guys. <laughs> what we're doing is bringing this thing back to life and making uh, do with what we got here. Yes. So we brought out the good old Porta Power. <laughs> uh, all the, you know, uh, makeshift guys, you guys know about that. And then from there, we're going to just fit so we get the tub fitting exactly where we want it. Yeah. Again, this is kind of, like he said, a house called DIY project here. And we're learning as we go. Because you, you guys know, we've already told you, Tim and I really have no idea what in the hell we're doing. So to have the professionals here to kind of guide us and do what they think could work is really, really nice. Straighten it out a little bit more. And I think that we should be able to fit good. 
now it's up to the professionals. We get to see how they work and the tools that they use. This is gonna be a lot of testing on and off scenarios and just hammering it out. up on this one that way you can okay. see you're gonna be doing here so this is what we call the jaw um bigger version of well a smaller version you've probably seen fighter fighters yeah to yeah open stuff up but we can use this to get into tight spaces and with the hydraulic manual press we can make it open up so this is a very cool tool that uh is involved in the kit nice so essentially with that tool they'll be able to kind of we can, bow we this can out. Try to straighten that out again sometimes uh when you go into these collision jobs your main approach then the first approach is always straighten stuff out before you try to mock anything right. yeah. closer Look at that. Yeah. Oh my god. That's how close I am to s <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, this sits all the way back here, right? Yeah, back here. Holy s That is uh insane. Insane progress. We can actually slip the front hub onto the existing frame rails. Granted, we're gonna be using our new ones, but that is great progress for the at least existing frame rails that we'll have to continue using. Crushing it. Great success. <laughs> oh, right on the impression. Great too. success. Holy crap, dude. For the first time, we, I mean, technically have a bolted up new front tub. Right, put the fenders on it and just send it. <laughs> just Don't send even. it like this. Oh my God. You guys killed it. The frame rails are good enough for us to use factory bolts to bolt in the new tub, which is insane. Granted, this isn't the end. We still have a lot of work that we have to do to make sure that we can get the new frame rails on, to bolt up. I mean, there's, there's a lot, but this is a massive, massive step in the right direction. Holy crap, I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped. It's working. <laughs> be honest here, when you guys walked in the shop and saw this, did you think that you were gonna be able to get it as close as you were? It was scary. Yeah. It was a scary sight. I mean, I think that's why we came here for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't gonna leave without it, well, but. Yeah, Tim, I cut, I cut the front end of this thing off and Tim and I looked at each other and we were just like, that's not how it looked before you cut that off. <laughs> It was a lot worse than we expected. But if there's anybody that could do it, it was definitely you guys. So the fact that you're able to come out here in a house call, not even with all their full tools and get it this far, that's pretty damn incredible. While the SOS crew did a great job, the front tub wasn't finished. Now it's up to us. It's time to cut our existing frame rails so that our new replacement frame rails can fit. This has to be perfect. If we mess this up, the replacements won't work, and all of this work will be for nothing. Now Tim's the mastermind here. Throughout this entire rebuild, he's been researching and collecting measurements. He's marking where the exact cuts have to be in order for our replacement rails to slide in properly. This is the real deal. This whole thing is like not, never going back, but like chopping the frame rail up, that's like... Yeah, if you mess this up, you, it's not coming back. <laughs> we can do it! And that's just quite literally it. We have to do it. Have to be precise. Yeah, you're right. Oh, 
got so scared on that one. Do you think I did it? We'll find out in a second when we put the rail <laughs> on and then put it in. Tim bro got his measurements on his side really, really close. So if I cut this okay enough, we should file that down a little bit. It should work. It should go on. Is it time? Yep. Let's get them rails on here and slide it in. This is insane. Very this good. is this is like the make or break the make or break point in the build, right? If we weren't able to get these frame rails straight, which shout out to SOS, then none of this really works. But now with the frame rail straight, the cuts are made, it's time to bolt these new frame rails into the tub, which is really cool. We'll show you guys in just a sec. Bolt this into the tub and then bolt the tub onto the car for our first initial mock-up, which is insane that we're even to this point right now. Tim, you ready? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. So, like we've demonstrated a million times, the frame rails just slide in and bolt on, kinda like factory. Now, all these need to do are slip into the rails on the car. On that note, we have made some serious progress on the Porsche GTS. This, guys, I mean, I'm sure you do, but if you don't, this is a massive, massive step forward. It, I mean, look, we, we <laughs> I, I have goosebumps just talking about it. We have a new front end on the GTS. I mean, it's not complete. We're still waiting on a lot of parts. I mean, here is our stack of parts right over there of things that we have. That we have been stacking up for the past six months. And some of it still has not come in yet. Some of it's from Germany, some of it's made to order, but in these next couple days and weeks for some of it, these parts are showing up. And so we are right on track and doing everything right. I mean, the tub fits, look at this. Our new frame rails are in. The measurements that Tim had were exactly correct, lining the new frame rails up to the old frame rails. Everything's bolted in. Yes, this is a massive step forward, but we are nowhere near done the front end of this car. Now everything has to get seam sealed, riveted in, and first of all, before we can do all that, we have to test fit everything. Now, I'll let you in a little sneak peek if you guys stayed this long into this video. We have something special coming for the actual rebuild of the car. It's not just gonna be your regular, came in GTS. We're doing something special. I've been stacking up, searching for parts for, and it's all coming together. With all that being said, I hope you guys are stoked on the progress. Hopefully I'm filming this good for you guys, and I really wanted to go in depth with everything that we're doing. Again, this is our first time doing a build like this, so obviously there's gonna be growing pains, and for the next one, I know what I can do better, but I hope, I hope so far you guys have been really enjoying the series, the way that we set up the videos, how in depth and what we're showing. I don't know, I'm just really enjoying this completely new style of not only content creation, but also building. Quite literally was a total loss and rebuilding that to be something that can be back on the street or back on the track. It's just a whole different animal and a whole different feeling. But anyways, I'm rambling on it for the end of this video. Tub is on. We have a full freaking GTS front tub, guys. This is huge. Probably one of, if not the biggest moments in this entire rebuild. So like I said, next up is fitting up all of our parts, making sure the frame actually is correct and making sure we don't have any gaps in like the front bumper, the fenders, the hood, etc. That's coming up in the next video. In the next video, this entire front end, I mean, essentially, I don't wanna make any promises, but essentially the car should be pretty much back together for the next video. Cause after that, this thing has gotta go to paint. So. 
the next video, the car should drive and it should be back together, I think. So that's insane. Anyways, guys, I gotta end this video. I am going on a serious adventure this weekend. Get excited because I'm doing a three-day vlog, three-day daily vlog series about some crazy epic adventure I get to go on that it's one of those things where you get the opportunity and you just can't say no. That's happening this weekend and I leave tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. So I gotta finish up this video, get all my stuff packed and head out. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching episode number four. Episode number four of the GTS rebuild. I'm so excited to show you guys what we have coming up. If you have not already, make sure you hit that like button. Leave us a comment down below about what has, your, what has been your favorite part of this build so far. Let us know down in the comments. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. We are so close to 800K. And we'll see you guys for the next episode, for the next daily vlog series that's starting on Monday. So stay tuned for that. Peace out, guys.